Two-way data binding combines string interpolation and event binding to react to events and output data at the same time. This ensures that the logic and the view is always in sync. Two-way data binding uses the vModel directive on the element we want to take input from. As its value, it references a data property from the logic that we want to modify. As an example, let's say we have a text field that requests a user's name and stores it in a data property. If we type a name in the text field in the browser, it will automatically update the paragraph above it. If you remember from the previous lesson on event handling, we had to do the same thing in a two-step process where we used the event object. With vModel, the data property is directly connected to the input, so we don't need the event object. By default, View will evaluate vModel every time the input event is fired. This can be on a key press or when we paste some text from the clipboard. We can wait until the user has finished inputting and has unfocused the field by chaining the lazy modifier to vModel. To demonstrate, we'll expand our example to use a first and last name. The first name will have the lazy modifier and the last name will be the standard binding. When we type a name into the first field, nothing will show until we tab over to the second one. The second field will show each character we type in real time. Technically, the lazy modifier syncs the changes on the change event instead of the input event, which fires less frequently. This can help speed up the application because view doesn't have to render each time a key is pressed. Sometimes, users will accidentally leave whitespace before or after their input. We can do a quick tidy up operation that removes the whitespace by using the trim modifier. To demonstrate, let's add the trim modifier to both inputs in our example. If we add any spaces before or after the text we type, view will strip them when we unfocus the field. Now that we know how input binding works, let's go through the other form elements and learn how to use vModel with them. Binding data from a text area is exactly the same as with a text field. And, because text areas allow for a large amount of characters, it's a good idea to optimize performance with the lazy modifier. If we go to the browser and type something into the text area, it shows in the paragraph like we expect. When we use a grouped element, we specify the vModel directive on the parent. Single select drop down elements use select as the parent and option as the children. So, we need to add it to the select element. If we go to the browser and choose an option in the drop down, it will display in the paragraph. When we use a multi select control, the data must be stored in a multi value data container, like an array. A multi select control also uses select as the parent and option as the children, but adds the multiple attribute to allow more than one selection. When we control click elements in the multi select control, it displays those elements in the paragraph. A radio button element works similar to a text input field. We add vModel to the input field and it will bind whatever is in the value attribute. When we select a radio button on the page, it will display bad, okay, or good in the paragraph. Check boxes work a little different. A single checkbox without a value attribute will return a boolean true or false. As an example, let's give the user an option to subscribe to a newsletter by checking a checkbox. When we check and uncheck the checkbox, it will display true and false, respectively. If we want the default state to be checked, we can simply add the checked attribute to the input. And that means we also have to change the value of subscribe to be true by default. If we have multiple checkboxes, the contents of their value property can be sent to an array if they're checked. As an example, let's simulate a shopping list that's been populated with some shopping items. The user can then check items as they collect them in their cart. It should be noted that only items that have been checked will be added to the array. There's no unchecked value. Now that we understand how to work with various form controls, let's quickly discuss 
how to submit the data. We can handle the form submission with event binding. So, all we need to do is add a submit event to our form that references a method. The method is responsible for performing any operations on the data, like validating it and sending it to a storage layer. When we enter a first and last name in the input fields and submit the form, view will invoke the submit form method and log the object to the console. Usually, the data would be sent to an external resource like Firebase, which we cover later on in this series. In the next video, we'll learn about computed properties that can be bound to the template, like data properties, but have logic, like methods. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.